safety in forms. Well, let's uh, speak to Eric Magundi in Nairobi. He's the Africa Programme Manager at Midan, a non-profit social technology company. It's great to have you with us on the news hour. Um, just start by telling me, why do people get so much of their news on sites like Facebook and Instagram? I think the main driver of uh, people getting the news from online platforms and messaging apps is because the cost of actually acquiring this information is, is quite high. Because if you look at the cost of, let's say, a, a cable TV subscription, or if you look at the cost of a daily newspaper compared to the cost of accessing these apps, which tends to be literal like, uh, cents uh, as a daily cost, it's more expensive to get uh, access to regular uh, mainstream sources of information compared to social media. Well, that's, that's yeah, especially interesting. Especially in countries like Canada. That, that, that's very interesting. That, that, that means that there is quite an emphasis on companies like Facebook to be uh, taking a more responsible role when it comes to getting information out. So would you say that, that Facebook, for example, is doing enough to counter misinformation given the prominence that they play when it comes to informing populations worldwide? I think uh, Facebook is trying in terms of uh, putting in initiatives to fight the spread of false information on their platform. But a lot of these strategies tend to be driven by reactionary practices rather than being proactive in terms of educating their audiences. And one of the things that we've seen is Facebook trying to partner with uh, fact-checking organizations in different uh, places and different countries to establish local initiatives to fact-check information. But a lot of times these organizations tend to be quite small. And then the type of work they do tends to also be reacting to the spread of false information rather than pre uh, preemptively telling audiences this is how you can detect any false information that you're likely to see on their platform. So it tends to respond rather than to preempt the, the spread of this false information. Do you think that these solutions that Facebook is providing, I mean, are they any use? I, I use social media. Whenever I see these boxes saying click here to find out more about this, my instinct is, no, I want to scroll on and find more photos of cats or something. Do, do you think these measures will really be helping people and, and the way that they're, they're using their social media feeds? I think at some level, these platforms need to be radically redesigned so that the emphasis is on you actually consuming the content you want rather than giving the people who want to reach you access to you. So we've seen some very like extremely targeted false information where people actually produce ads to promote this information. They can look for you based on your age, based on your location, based on all these other things. But uh, this is often like an invisible consequence of using these platforms that people who are on them might not really be aware of. So at some level, these platforms are built to take your content and sell it to advertisers rather than give you a place where you can reach uh, your friends and family and get all the content that you want. So by presenting themselves as uh, a benign go-between in terms of accessing information rather than an actual conduit for people to reach you and actually to actively disinform you, then I think uh, that should sort of inform the sort of strategy that Facebook takes. And uh, this means much more uh, work in terms of understanding audiences in these places and understanding the bad actors as well, because it doesn't seem that they actually understand the intentions and the actions of these bad actors. OK. And just finally, a final question. There are several elections coming up. Are there any that your organisation is particularly concerned about, uh, given the rates of misinformation that we are seeing? I think the main one that uh, we're looking at is Tanzania, which is later this month, because the government has actually put a lot of regulations in place to sort of uh, target uh, so uh, users on on these platforms and inform and misinform them. Uh, so we've seen active disinformation campaigns sort of targeting one of the main opposition candidates in Tanzania, where they've said or, or they're posting certain things, certain false things about uh, the, the opposition candidate. And then also we've seen uh, elections coming up in French-speaking West Africa, in Cote d'Ivoire and Guinea, where there's also the likelihood of false information. So we're listening uh, and we're actively looking for uh, people who are working in these spaces to work with them to sort of uh, tackle this false information and build audience literacy and engage with them so that uh, people know where to turn to get uh, factual information. OK, Eric Magunzi there joining us from Nairobi. Great to get your insights. Uh, thank you very much indeed for talking to Al Jazeera. Okay.